Welcome to this episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. I'm Taylor Burton Edwards, Liturgy Man, your Director of Worship Resources with Discipleship Ministries of the United Methodist Church. I am your apportionment dollars at work to help you strengthen worship and the understanding of worship where you are. Today's question is one I've heard over a number of uh, years being in this position with Discipleship Ministries since 2005, and that is, where does the particular structure of the opening worship set of that we find in contemporary worship or modern worship, where does that come from and why is it the way it is? Why does it seem to move from fast songs toward slow songs? And why does, what are the texts that are involved in those different speeds of songs somewhat different from each other? Well, let me first commend to you a book that just came out this past year, Lovin' on Jesus by Sui Hong Lim and Lester Ruth. Um, this is the first book ever published on the history of contemporary or modern worship, and it is terrific. It, th this question and many others you may have about contemporary and modern worship practices, the history behind them, can be found in this book. This book will cover all of that. So if this is something of interest to you, get Lovin' on Jesus. And we should be loving on Jesus anyway, right? Regardless of worship style. But the question, where does it come from? Lester Ruth and Sui Hong Lim in their book point out that um, that particular structure of the opening worship set or music set comes really from Pentecostalism and more even more specifically from what's referred to as the Latter Rain Movement, L-R-A-I-N, Latter Rain Movement that begins in Canada in the late 40s and early 50s in Pentecostalism. One of the things that's happening in that latter rain movement is an intensive focus on praise and at the same time seeking to understand and implement what they understand to be God's purposes and design for what worship should be. And one of the things that comes out of that movement is an intense focus on Psalm 100 verse 4. This is how it's put in the New Revised Standard Version. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. The way that these uh, Pentecostals beginning in Canada and then through their influence many others throughout the United States and the world uh, were interpreting this was that this points to specific phases in the movement of worship itself. We enter the gates of the temple or the tabernacle with thanksgiving, songs about God, kind of high energy songs. We then go into the courts in a more intimate connection, a bit more intimate, with praise. These are also fairly high energy songs, but this time not of simply giving thanks to God for what God has done, but praising God for who God is. And so a much greater focus on you language and also an intensive use of scriptural language to uh, address our uh, focus on God. With that praise piece also was brought in Psalm 22, 3. Yet you are holy enthroned on the praises of Israel. This does not say that through praising God, we're making God show up. Rather, it was saying, as these Pentecostal interpreters put it, that we were opening ourselves up to uh, the presence of the Holy One in our midst as we are offering our praises. And as we were exalting God, we were experiencing the exaltation of God also lifting us up into the next phase, which is worship. So you may have heard of praise and worship. This is where it comes from. We move from the courts then into the Holy of Holies. And at that point, the, uh, we are in this state of full surrender and letting go um, individually and collectively and in union with God. And the music that supports that is typically uh, much more intimate, fewer words, more repetition, um, and uh, much slower in tempo. So we move from a faster tempo to a slower tempo, from more uh, exalted language to more intimate language. And in the course of that, fulfilling what, what they understood to be the biblical basis for worship. Another book I want to point you to, which talks about this from another angle, is Worship Across the Racial Divide by Gerardo Marti. 
And what uh, Gerardo has done here is to interview thousands of people who are part of multicultural megachurches across the country, many of whom have this opening song set as part of it. And again and again and again in his interviews, he found the same thing happening. People describing their own experiences of worship, of connecting with God in the songs of thanksgiving or praise, even if they didn't use that language, the opening songs that were more high energy. And then as they moved into these more uh, slow songs, more intimate songs, that's when they described actually getting to that place of being able to let go, making that full connection, getting into that space of union with God. So both from a biblical basis, historically, and from a, an experiential basis, that song set has become an important fixture in contemporary worship, not just Pentecostal, but in all, all kinds of Christian communities since that time. I hope this has been helpful. I hope you'll make it a point to look up these books, get a copy, read them sometime. I think you'll find them really helpful. And remember, you can always reach me, worship at umcdiscipleship.org, through our UMC Worship Facebook group, or drop a line on this page, and perhaps your question or comment will become the basis for a future episode of Q&A with Liturgy Man. May the peace of Christ be always with you.